What was that for? Well, that piece of aluminum, that was cut from an eight foot piece of one eighth inch by three quarter by eight feet. So I cut that 39 inch long segment and that's going to be the lights in the top of the van. Most people are using uh, puck lights and I would rather use indirect lighting. So. This piece of aluminum right here is going to hold the strip of LED lights. This is the strip of LED lights. We're going with white LED lights, 6500K daylight, and they're just going to be white. They're not going to be RGB, which you could get all different colors. By just being light, by just being white, there are only two connections necessary. Now, how's this gonna work? This is the piece of aluminum that I'm gonna attach it to. There's two reasons why. One, it'll make it a lot easier just to screw this to the roof of the van. Also, it's aluminum, so it'll help dissipate the heat from the LEDs. The LEDs don't give off a lot of heat, but the little bit of heat they do give off does reduce their lifespan. So if we can keep them cool, their lifespan will be a lot longer. Now it's important that the aluminum be clean. Aluminum oxidizes really well and very quickly. Matter of fact, if I just rub this on here, it'll probably be black. It's a little black. But we're going to clean that off with a little rubbing alcohol. This is the 91% variety. And we want to clean that off, make it super clean, so that our self-stick LED strip will stick and stay on. When you buy these LEDs off of Amazon, some of them do come with clips, little plastic clips that will hold the strip on. Uh, sometimes the adhesive on these is better than others, depending on the brand. And I actually think depending on the lot. Sometimes I've had this fail in one order and then in another order, they were fine. Uh, this company that I'm buying them from now is much more reliable as far as the LEDs and especially the self-stick strip. So it's real simple. You just peel it off. Now these LED strips, you can cut to any length, anywhere you see those two little copper dashes with the plus and minus. Then you need to buy yourself these connectors. All right, the connector opens up and has two little terminals inside. This is for the white only LEDs. If you have LEDs that are RGB, which will give you all the colors, you'll have four connectors. Make sure when you buy your LED strip, you buy the correct connector to go with it. They're not usually sold together, so it'll be two separate orders. Then, you simply take the end of your LED strip and hook it up to the connector. Now you gotta remember, this is the connection. So you gotta flip this over, connect it to those two, and snap that down. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Then a little piece of electrical tape, just to hold this in position and keep it closed. And that's one of the strips that will be the ceiling lights. It'll provide indirect lighting.
A few things to keep in mind when you're doing your LED lighting. As I showed you, I made this aluminum strip of LEDs and I put that connector on. Then I needed to extend the length of the wire. To extend the length of the wire, I used these heat shrink connectors that also have solder embedded in the center. It's a low melt solder so as you heat up the heat shrink you concentrate a little bit on the center and it will automatically in one step solder the wires together. They come in all different sizes. For this we're going to use the smallest size. So just strip your wires then slide this over and put your two wires together. If you wanted to do overkill and a little more than you needed to do, you could actually tin these wires ahead of time, but I found it's not necessary. Then you slide this back over and that one's ready. And I'm going to do the other one also. Oh, got to make sure you put this on first. And twist them together. And then slide that piece over. get it centered and you'll see I offset these two. I don't always remember to do that but it's a good idea because if for some reason somehow this failed, this heat shrink failed, this way they would not be directly across from each other positive and negative and it wouldn't short out. So if you think about it that's a good idea. As you can see here I didn't think about it there I kind of forgot but it's always a, a best case thing to do. Then you apply some heat. And as you heat them up, you will see that solder will actually melt. Ooh, it's hot. There it goes, it just melted on the black one. And that's all you have to do. And after a few moments of cooling down, you've got two completed connections. Now, another hint is that the LEDs are 12 or 24 volts highly recommend the 12 volt version because your batteries are probably 12 volts so there's no reason to have to step up or make a conversion. With the LED strip it's always good to test these out and you may not have 12 volts available easily but if you have a 9 volt battery that's good enough. Take your 9 volt battery put it on there and you can test your LEDs out. Remember LEDs light emitting diodes have polarity so if you connect them in the wrong direction it will not light so that's something to remember try it this way if it doesn't work try it that way and then if it doesn't work you must have a loose connection it's always good to secure these connections down the connectors to your LED strip I use electrical tape and tape it down just to make sure that it doesn't wiggle and lose connection somewhere along the line. Some people I've seen use adhesive caulk or some type of glue. I don't like that because I'd like to undo this and be able to redo the connection easily. So I'm going with electrical tape. You can purchase aluminum channel that's specifically designed for this LED strip lighting. 
and it fits perfectly in the channel. You can get this angled channel or you can get flat channel. It comes with this little plastic diffuser and it snaps right into the angle. Of course, when you're trying to do this in videotape, sometimes it doesn't work. Oh, I'm getting lucky. Look at that. Snaps right in there and that helps diffuse the LED lights so you're not seeing real bright dots all along the way. Now, with the LED lights I purchased, they come with a remote control. The remote turns them on, off, has a timer and dimmer. One of the nice things about this brand of LEDs is that if you have more than one of these remotes, you can program both remotes to control your set of LEDs. So I bought a second set so that I have a spare remote. In case my remote gets damaged or lost, I have a backup. Because who knows if this brand will still be around or this model will still be around two, three, four, five years from now. So that's the reason I bought a second set and you can see that I haven't even started to use this remote. It's my backup. Also has an on off dimmer control that's hardwired. So I'm gonna take this and put this by the bed and then leave this one by the sliding door. The connectors that come with it are excellent because you can use them in your van build. It of course comes with a wall transformer that you don't need because all this wall transformer does is take the voltage down to 12 volts. So what I've done in my van build is I've cut this and used this to wire it directly into the van electrical system. And then I've used these nice little connectors that it came with and cut these off and connected it directly to the LED strip lights. I'll be showing how I did that in an upcoming video when we actually install the LED lighting. So subscribe if you haven't already done so.